Hello everyone. Hello. How are you? Wow, look who this is, Dave, with us. Yeah, Parky is back. Ah, oh, hello Parky. It's nice to see you again. You wave yeah, at everybody. There's Parky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Parky's joined us for Christmas. It's Parky at Christmas. Mm. Yes, he's looking particularly festive. What what makes him look particularly festive? Can you see what makes him look festive? You point to what makes him look festive on the screen. Yeah, you can point, Dave, as well, can't you? Yeah. That's he's it. He's got his Santa hat on. Yeah. Yeah. So Parky is getting ready for Christmas. He's been helping us get ready for Christmas in other ways as well. Can you see anything else that Parky might have helped us helped us get ready for Christmas with? Point to what you can see. <gasps> wow, look there. It's a lovely Christmas tree, isn't it? Yeah, we've got our Christmas tree up. And is there anything else that uh, we've been doing to get ready for Christmas, Sarah? Um, oh, I think we've also got some things back here. Oh, what, what, these what are, are these? Uh, these are our Advent calendars. Ah, so that's Sarah's Advent calendar. Yeah. Finding Nomo or something like that. <laughs> yes, uh, vegan and dairy-free and all kinds of other things. Oh. Delicious. Yeah. And this wow. is yours. Maltesers. Yeah, I think I'll be sharing that with Palky. That sounds fair. Yeah. Have we put any other decorations up, Sarah? Can you tell the children about other decorations we've put up? Uh, yeah, we've got our uh, tinsel and some lights on the stairs. Mm -hmm. We've got our festive wreath. And we've got some uh, beads and uh, stocking on the fireplace as well. Yeah, Sarah's Christmas stocking is hanging. Why have you hung a stocking by the fireplace, Sarah? Because I'm hoping that someone might put some presents in it for me. Uh, do you think Santa might come down the chimney? I'd like to think so. Yeah. Yes, we do get things out of the chimney sometimes. So, yeah, Santa bringing presents would be an excellent idea. Yeah. And there's good news because apparently Santa Claus doesn't get COVID-19. Yeah, and didn't Boris uh, say to a child who asked him that this week that uh, maybe he could leave hand sanitizer out with the cookies for Santa and that would be fine? That's a good idea. I hope Santa doesn't confuse which ones to eat and which ones to mm. smear on his hands. <laughs> yeah, that would be both a waste of food and disgusting. Mm. So we start to get ready for Christmas in uh, the last sort of Sunday or the f in November or the first Sunday in December. And we sometimes have a special name for this time of year leading up to Christmas. Do you know what it is at home? Sarah, do you know what it is? Uh, we call this time of year Advent. Mm. And what is Advent all about? Uh, Advent's about what we've been talking about already, really. It's about making preparations for Christmas, uh, making preparations to remember uh, everything that's special about this time of year. Mm. So it's about getting ready, about being prepared. And it's also about the idea that we're looking forward uh, to something special happening. We're looking forward to Christmas Day. It's all about a promise that's going to be kept, uh, the promise that Christmas Day will come. And we'll be able to have lots of fun and joy on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And through Advent, we're going to be learning all about a promise that God made. Uh, the mm -hmm. promise that God had made, not just a month in advance, but thousands of years in advance. And that promise started right at the beginning of the Bible. Now, we have a Christmas tree, a nice tree, a good tree. And we've got a good reptile, a good dinosaur, most of the time. Good reptile. Yeah, good dinosaur. But this story is actually about a bad mm. reptile and a dangerous tree. I wonder if you know what it is. It's the story about how our world started and unfortunately how things began to go wrong. Because God made a beautiful world and he made animals like dinosaurs and fish and birds and mammals and monkeys monkeys are a form of mammal aren't they yeah <laughs> and uh, he made them to live in his world and he made adam and eve the first human beings to look after the world and he gave them a beautiful garden to live in where they were going to be safe and looked after uh, but god put two trees in the garden one was called the tree of life 
to remind them that he had given them life and he wanted them to live with him forever. And the other tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God said to Adam and Eve, don't eat from that tree, because if you eat from that tree, you are choosing death. Death will come. People will die and the planet will suffer and there will be sickness and suffering and disease. Well, one day the serpent, I said it was a bad reptile, didn't mm. I? The serpent came and tempted Adam and Eve and said, did God really say you can't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And Eve said, yeah, that's right. We're not meant to eat from it. We're not even meant to touch it. Uh, but we can eat from all the other trees in the garden. And uh, the serpent said, oh, uh, why did God not let you do that? And Eve said, because we'll die if we do that. And the serpent said, oh, no, 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 no. God, God is scared of you, doesn't like you very much. Wants to keep you in your place. And he knows that if you eat from that tree, you will become like him. You will know good and evil. You will be as powerful and as special as God. And Adam and Eve were tempted by this. And they thought, that sounds nice. We'd like to be like God. We'd like to be in charge. We'd like to be able to do whatever we want and not have anybody to say no to us. And so they ate the fruit. As soon as they ate the fruit, they began to feel something called guilt and something called shame. That meant they felt horrible and ugly inside and wanted to hide. But God came and found them. And because they had disobeyed him, and we call that sin, God said that, yes, death was coming. They would die. And this planet that was completely perfect and beautiful would now have death and suffering and pain and trouble in it. But God also made a promise, one of the first promises. Because when he judged the serpent, he said this to the serpent. He said, you and your descendants will be the enemy of the woman's descendant. And you will try to bite the descendant's heel and poison him. But he, the descendant of Eve, will strike or crush your head. And what God meant was not simply that people won't like snakes and will try to stand on them, though. A lot of people don't really like snakes too much, do they? Do you like snakes, Sarah? No. 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 What he meant was this. That the serpent was actually Satan come in disguise. And God was saying that one day a descendant of Eve would do something that would defeat Satan and stop his wicked plans. And that person was Jesus. And the promise was that Jesus was going to come and to deal with the problem of sin and evil and suffering by dying on the cross and rising for us. Mm. And that's why we look forward to Christmas Day, because Christmas Day is when we remember that Jesus came. And over the next few weeks, in our Sunday services, and with a bit of help from Parkey, we're going to be looking at other times in the Bible when God repeated this special promise that Jesus was going to come. Well, thank you for watching with us, and we will see you very soon. Bye. Bye-bye.